Well, good morning, and we welcome you to St. Paul United Methodist Church at our downtown traditional worship service. We are so grateful to have you tuning in with us uh, via live stream this morning. We pray that as you unite your voices with ours, as you engage in Holy Scripture, uh, that God may be glorified in your home or wherever you may be, just as God is being glorified in this sacred space. We thank you this morning for joining us in worship. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord, in your own space. Let's all stand together as you're able and sing, Spirit of Faith, Come Down. I invite you now to, uh, to join us as we affirm our faith in reciting the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, 
The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As our worship continues this morning, I invite you from home uh, to bow your head as we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer together. Father God, we rejoice in this day, a time that we can come together in a holy space, a time that we have the gift of technology to be united with one another uh, as we honor you. Lord, as we praise you, as we glorify your name, today we rejoice in the plethora of blessings that you have bestowed upon your children and bestowed upon your church. And Lord, we thank you most of all on this day for the gift of Christ, uh, Christ who came offering his life as the full sacrifice uh, for our sinfulness. God, even when we have opted to run away, even when we have chosen to reject your will and your love, uh, you still have come after us, seeking us, desiring to be in relationship with us. You still offer forgiveness through your grace. And Father, for that on this day, uh, we thank you. We thank you for that unconditional love that you have given us through the gift of Christ. Today, we thank you for the spirit the spirit that dwells within each of us, the spirit that binds us together, the spirit that empowers us to go forth boldly in mission and in ministry. Father, we thank you, for you are a God who draws near to us. You said that I will not leave you alone as orphans, and Father, you have maintained that promise, for you are a God who is faithful. And for that, this morning, we offer you our thanks, and we offer you our praise. We come into this hall with many, many joyful feelings in our soul that we can be together, that we can unite our voices, that you are with us. But we also acknowledge, Lord, on this day, there is grief, there is brokenness, there are relationships that are suffering, there sometimes is mental chaos, there is physical pain among us and among our friends and our family and our community. And Father, we know you to be our great physician, a God of healing. And today we pray, we pray for healing. Where there is exhaustion, uh, may there be rest. Father, where there is chaos, may there be peace. Where there is brokenness, may there be reconciliation. And Father, where there is sickness, might healing unfold. And while we pray these things from our earthly perspective, we acknowledge it is your will, ultimately. A will that we don't always understand, but it is your will that we pray will be done. Father, we thank you again for all that you have blessed us with in the gift of Christ. And now, as your children, we unite our voices in praying the prayer that your Son taught us as we pray together. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven... heaven Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We now come to an opportunity where we might engage in worship by offering a portion of that which God has blessed us with 
in returning it to the church for mission and for ministry. And we call this the presentation of our offering, the presentation of our tithes. And if you're watching from home today, you'll see across the screen two addresses. One is digital, which is a website where you can visit uh, and support the mission and ministry of this church. The other uh, is our physical address where you can mail in tithes and offerings. Uh, we thank you and we pray that all of God's children, uh, no, matter, no matter where their church is, that we might be obedient and joyful uh, as we give to see the kingdom unfold. I invite you now to join me as we pray over our tithes and our offerings. Father, we thank you for these blessings that you have given us. And Lord, now we come with obedience in our soul, seeking to please you, offering back but a portion of all that with which you have so graciously bestowed upon us. And Father, as these gifts are offered, may you empower your staff at this church. May you empower your lay leadership that we might be great stewards of these resources, that in everything we do, in every program that comes forth, in every vision and dream that we have, that we are solely about making the name of Jesus known for your glory. And all God's children said together, amen. <laughs>
Well, good morning. It is so good to be back in the house of the Lord with you with another opportunity to open up Holy Scripture and to allow the Spirit uh, to speak and to guide us. Uh, But I do want to thank you first. This past week has been phenomenal uh, in Ocean Springs as folks have come by, have popped in the office downtown, have come to the East Campus to visit. Uh, The hospitality of this community has been overwhelming, Uh, and from the bottom of my heart and and for my family, for Heather and and the kids as well, we're so thankful, so thankful for all of you. And as we're in the process of of learning names and faces, uh, we can't wait to get to know you better uh, and to really engage in relationship as we journey towards holiness uh, together. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if I haven't had a chance to meet you yet uh, at a service, uh, you know that um, uh, as it stands, hopefully for the next couple weeks as we figure this out, um, I will be serving uh, the uh, office hours in the East Campus Uh, Mondays and Tuesdays, and then I'm going to be at the downtown campus back in the parlor um, on Wednesday and Thursday. So as uh, as Alan and I are here working, I know that if you'd like to just pop in and say hello or get a cup of coffee, uh, I would love to see uh, and to learn a little bit about you, about your love of St. Paul, and most importantly, uh, your love of Christ and how the Spirit is moving in your life. Uh, If you were with us last week for that first sermon, uh, we were in Acts chapter 4, and we were looking at the prayer the disciples offered up. Facing great challenge and adversity, uh, their prayer was not, Father, remove us from hardship. Uh, Their prayer was for more boldness as they went forth proclaiming the gospel, that they would be empowered by the Spirit no matter the scenario or the situation. And we kind of tied that home and talked about St. Paul. Uh, Talked about, you know, are there hardships in the future awaiting a church that's seeking to proclaim the gospel? Sure. Is it going to be easy? No. Uh, Is it simple to follow Jesus and to live a life that glorifies him? No. It can be, if we're honest, it can be insanely difficult. But last week we talked about being a people, Uh, who didn't pray for God to remove us from hardship, but being a people uh, who prayed for God to empower us with boldness in the midst of hardship, that we would begin to see challenge as opportunity, uh, and that we would always strive to make the name of Jesus known and be a gospel people no matter where we find ourselves. This morning we're going to backtrack a little bit as I have been really leaning into the movement of the Spirit specifically in Acts chapters 2, 3, 4, uh, and 5. And we're going to kind of start at the very beginning today. And I, I want to share with you, uh, looking at Peter, uh, Peter was this, uh, this voice of the disciples. He was probably, you know, Jesus' number one guy. And uh, we see him do some amazing things in Acts. But I, I want to I back up a little bit, and I want us to acknowledge Uh, We romanticize Peter sometimes in the church and see him as this phenomenal, strong leader and shepherd of the early church. And he became those things. Uh, Praise be to God for that. Uh, And may we aspire to the same. But the reality is that that wasn't always the case. In fact, there's two instances in the the New Testament, uh, really, and, and Matthew does a good job of recording these, where we see Peter really messing up. We see Peter's flesh. We see his humanity. We see... um, an individual who's distracted. And one of those instances comes to us from Matthew 16 when Jesus is talking about all the things that are going to unfold and the suffering that he will have to endure. And we see Peter that says, I forbid it, Lord God. I forbid it, Christ. Surely this this isn't meant to happen. And in that moment, Jesus rebukes Peter. He says, look, get behind me, Satan. We see that literally this champion of the early church, St. Peter, uh, is somebody who Jesus says, you are distracted. You're focusing on the ways of the world. You're not, you're not speaking on behalf of the kingdom. We see that again as Peter is the one who Christ says, you know, you're going to deny me. There's this moment in time when Jesus is saying, you know, uh, based on Old Testament prophecy, you guys are going to scatter like sheep. As soon as it gets hard, uh, you're going to run away. And, and Peter says, no, no, Lord, surely, surely not me. I will not do this. And Christ says, oh, oh, yes, you will. In fact, three times you will you will deny me before the rooster crows. And we see Peter does embody that. He embodies the flesh. When it got hard, when the challenge was present, Peter, 
Peter was about self-preservation, and he runs in the opposite direction. In fact, we can't just single him out because the reality is all the disciples, all the disciples fled. They fled for fear, and they fled out of their flesh because it was for them in that moment, in that hardship, with that threat before them. Uh, it was about self-preservation, and, and that was their main goal. And they left Jesus all by himself. So we acknowledge the disciples and their brokenness, and we really see this embodied in the life of, of Peter. But kind of keeping with that theme of the Holy Spirit, we see this beautiful transformation occur. We see in Peter how the Spirit comes into us and begins to change us and to transform us. For at Pentecost, we see the Spirit descends upon those apostles and they began to speak and proclaim the gospel in these different tongues. And, and Peter, who was filled and empowered with the Spirit, rises up and goes from this broken, running, scattered, fearing disciple. He goes from those things, from a disciple who was about self-preservation, a disciple who was allowing the flesh to guide him when, when things got tough. We see through the Spirit coming into him, Peter becomes part of the foundation of the early church, and that he begins to speak truth and do amazing things. And this morning, I, I want to remind you, and I know many of you know this already, and some of you may not, as we seek the Spirit, as the Spirit fills us, we can't help but be transformed. We can't help but become something new. The Spirit changes us. The gospel writers say it brings forth new life. Paul, who wrote all the letters to the early church, said as the Spirit comes, it, it crucifies that flesh. It takes away those desires as we begin truly belonging to Jesus and as the Spirit leads us to do great and wonderful things. We become a new person. In ministry, I've had the great privilege of serving, um, serving with those who find themselves in recovery. Uh, I, I have a heart uh, for, for those suffering for addiction, and uh, I have been shaped and molded by many phenomenal men and women in the church who have found themselves addicted uh, but have come to a place of recovery. And I've got one dear friend in mind right now. His name is James, and he is someone who struggled. He struggled with alcohol and drugs. He was someone who, who embodied the flesh, who pursued pleasure, pursued self-preservation, uh, and found himself down a broken, broken, broken road, uh, devoid of joy, full of despair, uh, really embodying brokenness. I had the joy of watching this gentleman, who was at the time a complete stranger, come to an understanding and a proclamation of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I got to see this man, who is now my dear friend James, become someone who was full of the Spirit. I got to witness firsthand the transformation in his life as he went from a place uh, of desperation uh, from a place of wickedness and a place of brokenness into a place of beautiful leadership in the church, into a place of healing, into a place of reconciliation with our Heavenly Father, into a place where relationships began to be restored, into a place where there was wholeness in his heart, into a place where literally the joy of the Spirit in his soul could not be contained like a cup overflowing, he began to spill out the good news of Jesus Christ to any and all who would listen. So when I think of Peter and that transformation from brokenness and fear into foundational leader of the church, I know what that looks like. I have seen that unfold in the lives of, of folks such as James and many others who have surrendered to that spirit within them and have sought to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. The beautiful thing is this, and this is the scripture we're getting to this morning. Finally, we're going to get to the sermon for this morning. We see the boldness of Peter as he begins to preach and he begins to teach. And we see how the Spirit moves, not only transforming us, but the Spirit 
moves in us so that we can be an agent of transformation in the lives of others. This morning, our reading comes to us from Acts chapter 2, uh, beginning in verse 36, and we're going to go to through 41 today. This morning, I'm reading uh, from the English Standard Version. Hear the word of the Lord. Peter says, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made Jesus both Lord and Christ. This is the Jesus whom you crucified. Now when the people who were gathered, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and they said to Peter and to the rest of the disciples, to the apostles, Brothers, What is it that we shall do? And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise, the promise of the Spirit, the promise of forgiveness has been given to you, has been given to your children, and it has been given to all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls unto himself. And with many other words, Peter bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Verse 41, and those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. The word of God for the people of God, we say together, Thanks be to God. So here again in this transformation, we see this disciple who is literally running for his life, this disciple who rebukes Jesus, this disciple who denies Christ three times. We see him now standing before the nation of Israel, preaching the gospel with certainty. We see him preaching with truth. We see him preaching with boldness as the Spirit has descended upon him. And the beautiful thing for you and I, the teaching lesson this morning, is that as we are transformed, is it for our sake, for the glory of God? Yes, it is. It is an individual process that we share together as we are made new, as salvation is given to us, as we are made into the image of Christ. For that this morning, we all say, Praise be to God. But let us be reminded that as we experience transformation, just as Peter did, it's something that cannot be contained. It is something that is to be put on display as we see Peter going forth speaking truth. And because of Peter's transformation, because of the empowerment that he is receiving of boldness and courage and truth, he speaks speaks to the people. He speaks grace to them. He speaks conviction to them. He tells them of salvation and journeys with them into receiving the Holy Spirit. And that is the example that you and I are to embody in our daily lives. Just as we have received the Spirit, we are to go forth as a people bringing the Spirit into the lives of others. Peter didn't stand before this crowd for his glory. It wasn't for his pride. It wasn't for his recognition, nor was it for his preservation. Peter was standing before them to bring glory to God so that the kingdom might unfold through his words. And that calling, that calling is something that you and I share. It's not just for preachers, not just for the disciples of the New Testament, not just for church staff. This is something that we all share as we seek to surrender to the Spirit, as we pray for boldness, as we talked about last Sunday, that we might go forth bringing the gospel and bringing hope and restoration and healing unto the people. One of the beautiful things is I see a little bit of a parallel in this story with my buddy James is that as James experienced restoration, as he experienced recovery and freedom from his addiction, uh, it wasn't something that he hid. It was something that he was so joyful about that he couldn't help but be a part of others' journey into recovery. That he is one who mentors others in brokenness. That he is one who holds others accountable. That he is one who is quick to say it is not by his own his own flesh or his own strength that he has seen change. It is because of a loving God who has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
I don't live in the same town as James anymore, but I follow him on social media, and we actually, we actually prayed together this week uh, over the phone. Uh, I've seen him do amazing things for the kingdom of God uh, as one who is surrendering to the Spirit and recognizes the joy that he's been given, the healing and the hope that he's been given. It's been meant to be shared, and he prays for boldness that he might do that for the glory of God. Of God Almighty. This morning I'm reminded as we close of a passage of scripture comes to us as Jesus is speaking to the disciples uh, in, the, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, and he says unto them, he says, you're the light of the world. A city upon a hill cannot be hidden. Don't hide your light under a bushel, but instead put it on a stand so that it gives light to all, that it gives light to all within the house. And this is done not for your glory, but that so people can see God shining through you, through your gifts, through the presence of the Spirit within you, and they can honor and glorify your Heavenly Father. Last week, we talked about praying for boldness. This week, I want us to continue praying for boldness. I want us to continue praying for courage, that we might follow in the footsteps of Peter, that we might embody the example of my friend James, that we might go forth and Christian witness, speaking the gospel with love and with grace, holding one another accountable and seeking for the kingdom to grow through our presence, through our witness, and through our example. May it be so in my life, and may it be so in yours. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's children said together, amen. Our hymn of invitation is 365 in your United Methodist hymnal, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Let's sing together. <laughs>
grateful that you have joined us this morning, that you have been part of our, our worship service via live stream. And as you prepare for this week, for Monday and Tuesday and all the days that follow until we come back together again, I pray for that boldness in you. I pray that you will see challenges as opportunities. Uh, and I pray that your cup will overflow into the lives of others, that healing and restoration might unfold uh, through your presence, and that all the while, God may receive the glory. As you go forth today, receive this benediction that comes to us from the book of Numbers, chapter 6. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.